Hello, um, I'm Ahmed and for this video I'm going to solve one example and explain how to calculate the primary and secondary path of equilibrium regarding the stability. So in the first two examples we went through the calculation of the shape mode and the buckling load. In this example we are going to calculate and explain how to understand the primary and secondary pathway of equilibrium. As you remember, uh, in the second example, we had uh, one compressive element with the interval rotational springs. And now in this example, I'm going to introduce two rigid bars hingely supported at point A and with the roller at point B in the position of the connection of two bars let's say point C we have a rotational spring a to C is assumed to be L and C to B is assumed to be 2L. The stiffness of this spring is going to be K and a force of P is applied at the end of roller B. As a result we have a Support reaction AX, the same value as P in the opposite direction. As you already know, after applying the load, we might have this type of deformation. So in this example, I'm going to calculate the buckling load and primary and secondary pathway by respect of theta instead of delta. So let's assume that in this end we have the angle of theta and as far as the other end is with 2L so it will be theta over 2. So it will be half of the other end. Again, first we need to calculate delta horizontal at point B, which is L minus L cosinus theta plus 2L minus 2L cosinus theta over 2. And then delta horizontal B will be L times 1 minus cosinus theta plus 2 minus 2 cosinus theta over 2. To calculate the primary and secondary pathway, uh, it is better not to use the equivalent uh, of cosinus theta or sinus theta. We will see how it works. So then I can calculate energy for this one which will be minus p times l 1 minus cosinus theta plus 2 minus 2 cosinus theta over 2. To calculate the potential energy stored in the spring at point c we have two rods one in the left rotating with the angle of theta and to the right with the angle of theta over 2. So relative rotation will be theta plus theta over 2, which is 3 theta over 2. Now I can calculate what is the potential energy, which will be 1 over 2 k and 3 theta over 2 power by 2, or let's say 9 over 8 k theta. Two. 
So pi as a function of theta will be w plus v will be 9 over 8 k theta 2 minus pl 1 minus cosinus theta plus 2 minus 2 cosinus theta over 2. Now we can calculate the p critical by finding the first derivative of pi by respect of theta and then calculate p critical for that sense. As far as I'm going to sketch critical values for this example, it is easier if we have some kind of value uh, which is dimensionless. For that reason, first of all, I assume that theta tends to be zero. As a result, one minus cosinus theta will be one over two theta two. This is first assumption. With this assumption, we will see that pi as a function of theta will be 9 over 8 k theta 2 minus pl times 1 over 2 theta power by 2 plus 2 1 over 2 theta over 2 power by 2. So I can simplify this. It will be 1 over 2 theta 2 plus 1 over 4 theta 2 or 3 over 4 theta power by 2. So then it will be 9 over 8 k theta 2 minus 3 over 4 pl theta power by 2. So the same concept, what we did for the other examples, round pi by respect of theta equals to 0, then it will be 9 over 4 k theta minus 3 over 2 pl theta equals to 0. As a result, theta will be zero. This is one solution and the other one P will be three over two K over L. So for this value, we can assume this is P zero, which is three over two K over L. So now I can come back to the main equation that we have So round pi by respect of theta equals to zero, then it will be nine over four k theta minus pl times sinus theta plus so it will be two by two sinus theta over two. And if we put this equation to be zero, then we can calculate what is P critical. So here, if we look at the equations, uh, P L will be nine over four K theta times one over sinus theta plus sinus theta divided by two. And I can divide the equation by L So it will be P critical will be 9 over 4 K over L theta over sinus theta plus sinus theta over 2. We assume that P0 is 3 over 2 K over L. So I divide this one with P0, which is 3 over 2 K over L. So then P critical over P0 will be 3 over 2 theta divided by sinus theta plus sinus theta over 2. I can name this dimensionless function as lambda so lambda will be 3 over 2 theta divided by sinus theta 
plus sinus theta divided by Now, if we come back to the main equation that we had after taking derivative with respect of to theta, here you can see that one answer to this equation is theta equals to zero. So it means that if theta is zero, so the equation valids, and as a result, this is uh, regardless of p. This is called primary. And the second one, which is uh, a function for P, is the secondary. Now we need to understand with which value of P the system would be stable or would be unstable. So for the primary path, we found that theta is zero. And for secondary path, theta was three over two, theta sinus theta plus sinus theta over two. And it's better if we have the first derivative. So as you know, the system will be stable if round 2 pi by respect of the variable is greater than 0. This is the condition that the system is stable. So for this reason, we need to make the second derivative of the total potential energy by respect of theta and check if it is greater than zero or not or you can find at which point the system will be stable or will be unstable so we are interested in this function to be greater than zero to check if the uh, system is stable. So now we can go through the first path or primary path that was zero and nine over four K minus P L times cosine of zero is one plus one over two. It will be nine over four K minus P L times three over two and it should be greater than zero. As a result, it shows that if P is less than three over two K over L, then the system will be stable. So before we go for the primary path, we can sketch the solution here to understand it better. So this is theta and this is force and this line shows the primary path if you remember p0 was 3 over 2k over l we calculated earlier and here you can see that this is also p0 so it means that up to a certain point, let's say this is P0. So up to here, the system will remain stable. And after that, it cannot be stable anymore. So then after that, a statement. So now there is another way. So instead of uh, if we increase the force and it 
reaches to this point P0, then it starts to lose its, st its stability. The other way is moving uh, or rotating around the axis in a way to keep its stability. Then we can find out what the secondary path is. So up to here, we understand that, okay, if theta is zero, then there are two branches. The first branch up to P0 is stable. And after that, the system will be unstable. The other way is to check if there is a tiny rotation at point C, for example, in this example, uh, how it works. So now we can come back to our secondary path that we calculated. Okay, it was lambda. Here also I can say that, okay, if lambda is less than one, this is also possible. If we divide P by P zero, it will be lambda. We can sketch this uh, with MATCAT, lambda as a function of P or theta is, I can write down the equation three over two, times theta divided by sinus theta plus sinus theta divided by two. And let's say theta is going to be from zero. up to p over 2. Now we can sketch with pellet here. One is lambda and the other one is theta. So here we can see how it looks like after, after a tiny uh, rotation at the uh, rotational spring. So now we want to understand, is it a stable or not? Apparently it is, but we can check and we can confirm. So one method is to calculate the second derivative of pi. We already calculated and we went through the primary path. We can continue with the equation for the secondary path so from 2 pi by respect of theta is 9 over 4k minus pl times cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2 and we want to keep it positive so then p should be less than 9 over 4k over l 1 over cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2. And we know that P0 was 3 over 2k over L. So I divide the entire equation by P0. So P over P0 will be less than 3 over 2, 1, over cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2. And this value represents lambda. So then if lambda is less than 3 over 2, 1 over cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2, then it means that the system will be stable. Now we can sketch this equation to see where the Lambda is less than 
this equation or this function. Uh, so lambda I will write with the s as a function of theta cosine theta plus 1 over 2 times cosine theta divided by 2. Now here I can add this lambda stability. I can also change the color of this plot to red. So, and I can limit this to, let's say, for example, 2.5. So here we can see that in the primary, uh, in the secondary path, uh, the system is stable for this domain from 0 to p over 2. So if we come back to our sketch, the vertical axis represents lambda and this one is theta and we have this lambda stability or, or where the system will remain stable. Here we can see that the blue line is the main lambda. So we can sketch in another way, a very famous sketch. It can be in positive or negative direction. And it's symmetry. So here we can see that This is primary and it's stable. This is secondary. And as far as the value is less than uh, this function, so it is also stable. This one is also secondary and it's also stable. That's it. This is the end of this example. In the next example, we will go through one more that the secondary would be unstable. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that uh, you could understand primary and secondary path for the stability. See you in the next example.